so so this is the video that i wish i had seen right this is the video that i wish somebody would have shown me when i was 16. you know when you grow up where i grew up in west africa in ghana right and you wake up as a 16 year old and you have enough intelligence to be conscious of your world and your environment and and you look in the textbooks that they give you in school I'm not wearing my shirt just to show off, right? I'm, wearing, I'm hoping that I can use it to make a point. I do look good, don't I? Um, so you wake up, right, as a 16-year-old in West Africa, and you ask yourself, so there's Rutherford there in England, and um, Faraday, and he's doing his research into electricity, and he discovers those laws, and then they send you over to France, and then you meet Lavoisier, and you meet... Um, Avogadro and all the rest of them and then you go over and then you discover that Jefferson was doing research um, Of some place right and then you look all across Europe and you see that everything Everything that is valuable in your environment Everything that is respected everything that is valued was created by people who don't look like you This this is what I wish somebody would have told me right What I absorb from my environment there were times when it was explicit, right? That maybe, just maybe, if the man had left us alone, that that we would have we would have created paradise. It was false. Another vision was that if if we had not been prevented by the forces of geopolitics and 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 geography that um, that it would have been better. It would not. What I wish somebody would have told me was that number one, the world, as I experience this, is the product of a multiplicity of forces at work. Number one, the biological. Number two, um, the geopolitical. And number three, technology. Maybe right. Um, so you have Jared Diamond's idea, right? Guns, germs, and, and steel. And so the question for 16-year-old me was, what did we do? What have we done, right? What do we bring to the table? Like right now, there's 8 billion of us. You look at the JAMA and the top journals in the world. We don't contribute anything. Not much. We do a little bit, right? The question that I wish somebody had asked, answered for me was why are we so backward? Because that's all I could see, right? That's all I could see. Here I was among the people who, as far as the textbooks told me, but for the white man's arrival, didn't even wear clothes like this, right? Man in his natural state. Chewed sticks instead of used toothbrushes. And so all of us, right? All of us in Africa, we grow up with a suspicion that just maybe, just maybe, We're not as good as them. Now, nobody tells you that, of course, right? Grandma doesn't call you and say, you know, um, long before you read their publications about being monkeys and three quarters or, you know, whatever percentage of humanity is bestowed on you. You look in your world and your environment and you see the technology with which the, the homes are built, the cars that drive on the roads, the bicycles. Fast forward a little bit, the computers, and it occurs to you that just maybe there is a gene that codes for a protein that is missing in black people's DNA. Because how else do you explain it? All that you see. What do you bring to the table? 
nothing. Instead, they said it wasn't our fault. They said it wasn't our fault. They said it was the other people's fault. Except that wasn't right, right? Because off here, right? You have Japan, it's this tiny island in the middle of the ocean, right? And right now, right now, Japan has a higher GDP than all of Africa. Now, if you're intelligent, you've got to ask yourself some questions, right? Now, there are people who will tell you that this question is not important, or they will tell you that there's nothing to be ashamed of. Those people, those people don't have any courage and they don't have any pride because you see, when a man wakes up and sees his neighbor come to his home and rape his wife and walk off with a smirk on his face and tells his children that that is normal, that's a coward. Now I should know, right? I was bullied in school because I was small. And I haven't completely made peace with it quite yet, you know. My Christianity only goes so far. There was a kid who always threatened me, right? Always threatened me. And um, and I never stood up to him because I was scared that he was going to trash me. But I should. I should have let him tear me up because you see, when a man sinks his teeth into his demons, he finds sometimes the demons bleed too. So what I wish somebody would have told me when I was growing up was that the white man was not the white man, right? The white man was all of humanity. He got his paper from the Chinese. He got his gunpowder from them too. And his ships. And all the technology that goes into creating the great and powerful kingdom and people of the English. And so in my mind, I thought there was a bunch of people sitting in England And in their universities, they had put together all the technology that had dominated the world. And here was me and all these Ashantis up in here. And you go to grandma and you say, grandpa and grandma, where are we from? And they said, we came out of the ground. They said one day there was a hole in the ground and all their cans, they crawled out of it. <laughs> now at 16, you already know that that ain't an argument you can take to the market, right? And so that's when the seeds are sown. That's why our sisters burn their scalps so that their hair will be straighter and longer, right? And that's why you buy their creams because you see, there's the idea of the cargo cult, right? So man is born superstitious. That is where religion comes from. It's not an excuse to dismiss it, but it's important. When a man finds himself in the middle of the jungle and then he sees before him a tiger that's ready to spring, he can do one of two things. He can believe that the tree that's next to him, that if he touched it, that it might create for him what he would later define as grace. And so religion is born. And so he wears his amulets and his talismans and he imagines that they might save him. The thing that nobody told me was that we are the sum total of all the people that we have been exposed to, all the cultures and all the ideas that we had been exposed to. 
and the Ashantis, from whom I'm descended. They had made contact with the Fantis and the Gas, and it was in war, so they couldn't learn anything from them. And so you see, we came up, I came up, ashamed because I was proud and terrified because I was inferior. Now you can sit there all day long, right? And say, yeah, we got PhDs too, right? Then go to the market and go to the hairstylist, right? Where our sisters go and our mothers go and see what they're doing there. And then you discover that, whoa, is mental slavery still? What did I wish that somebody had told a 16 year old me? I wish they'd have said that many more will have to suffer. Many more will have to die. Don't ask me why. Cause it's a natural mystic blowing through the air. And if you listen carefully now, you will hear. I wish they'd have told me that they don't know. I wish they'd have told us that they didn't know because nobody knew, right? Nobody knew. Because if they had told us that they didn't know, maybe we would have begun to suspect that we could find out. But you see, when you're given the veil of Maya in place of true knowledge, not only are you deceived, you are crippled. Now, how is this different, right? How is this different? 16-year-old me is walking around Premper College and he's asking himself, watching this video. So, Charles, you're saying right now that that's a reason that I am not Galois or Euler. No, that's not what I'm saying, kid. I'm saying that we don't know. Because if it's all guns, germs, and steel, right now, you can buy all the guns. The Russians are selling them. They'll sell you anything. And the germs, you go to the lab and you forget a petri dish and penicillin jumps at you. And there was smelting iron in Nigeria. I don't know, what, 1,500 years ago? I wish they'd have told us that they didn't know because what the culture fed us was that it wasn't our fault. But they knew the answers and the answers pointed to the fact that it wasn't our fault, but they didn't know the answers. They didn't know the answers. That's the point, that they didn't know the answers. I am trying to penetrate the disillusion that clouds the judgment and the understanding and consciousness of a black person as he comes up in the world and he finds in the world everything laid out ready for one conclusion that one of two things must hold Either he's incapable of the duties and responsibility and the burden of freedom, or he's completely without capacity for it. Now, there's a part of me 
that also thinks none of this matters, yeah? What are you going to do about it? Right? Like right now, if the Russians want it, they could, just like the British did, send one garrison, one unit, and wipe out all of West Africa. Wipe it all out. Nearly all the uranium that went into the bombs that were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki came out of Katanga in the Congo. The people of the Congo, they live on less than a dollar a day. So you tell me, right? Somebody took out the deposits from the ground and brought it over to Manhattan, refined it and turned it into a bomb. And that man, he's the man. I wish they'd have told us. I mean, what will happen if we woke up right one day, right? And in all of Africa, the fathers got up and they said, you know, sons and daughters, we, we have failed in the duties and responsibilities of mastery of our environment. And for this, we beg forgiveness and ask that perhaps you find if there's a way out of this maze into which we're trapped. But instead, they walk around and they have their cargo coats. They also wear ties and shoes, right? And have televisions in their homes and drive their cars, and you imagine to yourself that, hey, maybe we ain't so bad. But it's bad, brother. It's bad. I'll give you an example, right? So for the longest time, when I lived in Virginia, I'd go to the African market, and I'll buy my chewing sticks, right? Because you see, some things never change. And then I woke up, right? I woke up one day and I said, whoa, so they got to ship these sticks from West Africa, right? All the way to America so I can chew them. Now, wouldn't you think that with all these trees out here, that there will be some tree that's not toxic, that I could turn into a chewing stick? And whoa, don't you know it? So I went into the woods, right? Now you think I'm joking. I went into the woods and I made a record of a couple species that I could identify because that's one of the things, if it gets you nothing, that a degree in forestry buys you. And I plugged it into this year internet and it said, no toxicity found in humans. So for a couple years now, I've been making my own chewing sticks. Yeah, you laugh. I laugh too, you know. Because you see, that was a problem solved. I solved my problem. Yeah, I made my own chewing sticks. Picture that. I don't have any of the answers. I don't know that anybody does. But if you're watching this whenever, and you're, I don't know, 16, and you go to the barber shop, and he says, hey, kid, I could put this here petroleum jelly in your hair. It'll burn a little bit but it'll come out straight and you look like uh, like Brad Pitt. <laughs> Not like the homie on YouTube with his hair all nappy, chewing his sticks, talking about how he's going to save the world. <laughs> I 
So I think that it's okay to wake up to the realization of shame, guilt, and the burden, or at least the suspicion of being less than you ought to be. And I think that it's important once you find that to really ask the important questions of why the Japanese did not contribute anything to the advancement of the world until just about the last, I don't know, 200 years. Because you see, they have become the sum total of all the people and all the ideas and all the technologies that has been exposed to them. You live on this coastline where there are no natural harbors. And so nobody stops, right? Nobody stops. Nobody stopped on West Africa unless they had been swept there and gotten lost. But in Europe, you can beat Thomas Sowell for this, right? You had all these natural harbors, right? And so ships, tanks, whatever. Technology, right? So it's not our fault, Charles, if we had the harbors and, and um, you know, we had the large animals that could transport goods and Lord knows what all else, maybe it would have been great too. Maybe if the sea supply hadn't existed in West Africa, maybe we could have raised, we could have raised horses too and charged in our cavalries, right? I don't know. But this, this, I do know that it's not the man's fault and we are not without responsibility. And that would have been enough. That son, it's nobody's fault that our nation is run and coordinated by forces and instructions that come from another land, place and people. But we are not without the burden of responsibility because that is what the sovereignty war and that is what Yasan Tua represent, right? They represent the idea that we are not without responsibility because when a man sinks his teeth into his demons even as the demon drains his soul and his body of life, the demon must remember. That his victims did not die cowards. That his victims did not die cowards.